Hi, I'm John Gula with PetroleumServiceCompany.com, and today we have Jim Lewis in studio with us. He's here to explain a little bit to us about the differences in the R&O oils, and today I believe we're going to talk about synthetic rust and oxidation oils. Exactly. Synthetic rust and oxidation oils versus mineral-based rust and oxidation okay. oils. Mineral-based are ones that come from crude, and of course your synthetics are ones that are man-made. With your rust and oxidation oils, and uh, you know, this is a huge grouping of lubricants. You know, for your general purpose, do it all. It's you know, not specific to one application. Exactly, right, and, and they cover a lot of bases, and the reason being is they have, they have minimal additives to it. Really what it comes down to is the base oil quality in rust and oxidation oils. That really makes the difference in these products. Uh, minimal additives, so you're not worried about additives affecting whatever the application might be where a particular additive is needed or might not be desired. These are referred to as non-detergent or okay. zinc-free. The base oil quality can vary greatly from different RNO products. Uh, the top of the line being the synthetics, which we're talking about here. There's a lot of different reasons why you might have to jump up into a synthetic versus a mineral-based. Uh, one of the more common ones would be compressors in the industrial plants, or, or even, for that matter, in, in your garage at home. Uh, they generally call for synthetic-type rust and oxidation oils. The oil doesn't break down as readily as in a mineral-based type application. So when you're looking at it, mineral-based oils that come from the ground, they generally break down at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So at that point, there's a lot of applications that top temperatures are going well beyond 165 degrees. And in that case, they need to jump up into a better base oil. That would be the second reason why you might want to use synthetic RNOs versus mineral-based RNOs longevity. These could also be pieces of equipment that are in remote locations that you can't get to to service all the time. You want to extend that drain? Right, and that's really what they're doing. Right, so in that case, right, the additives are all the same. We're not, they're not talking about changing up the additives, you know, between the difference. Their difference is the base oil itself. So if I switch from my regular mineral car engine oil, now all of a sudden I'm going up synthetic. Now I'm going from 8,000 miles all the way up to 15,000 miles between my drain intervals. Um, another reason is the pore points. You know, the pore points of synthetic are a lot better. So it might be a cold climate. It might even be an operation, say, in a freezer application where they got pumps and pieces of equipment that running within a freezer. In the food industry, we run into this a lot, where they need a product that can flow at very low cold temperatures. Synthetics do that. Really like a, a higher viscosity index? Uh, exactly. And that's what, that right. And, and your index is what basically the higher the VI viscosity index determines how well that oil performs in cold okay. and hot temperatures or varying temperatures. Another application that they might, uh, you know, gearboxes call for extreme pressure gear lubes, you know, because you got a lot of load on these gearboxes and all that. But certain gearboxes might have yellow metals, things like that, where that extreme pressure additive that they use in gear oil isn't good for that application because it'll eat up those yellow metals they'll switch down to a rust and oxidation oil that's synthetic. The synthetic kind of takes the place of that EP additive that you had for the gear oil itself. You know, so kind of replace that so it's not detrimental. You still get the performance out. That's a, a good point you bring up there too because we get a lot of calls here where you know a customer will call in and they'll say, hey, I have this application that calls for an SAE 90 weight. Can I go ahead and use a, a regular automotive GL 590 exactly. in this application? Exactly, which is right, which you would not want to do, right? So, okay. you're, you know, a perfect example, John, because there's a gearbox that a GL 5 type product is loaded with additive, you know, and that's an that's automotive type gear set. And that additive is very active and it will eat apart a lot of metals. It's basically steel is the only thing that's good on. So in an industrial plant where they might have a gearbox application that it's made of a bronze gear set, something like that, that's where they'll jump up to a synthetic and say, now, okay, I can't use all these additives because those adversely affect it, but I do want the protection jump up to a synthetic. Well, hopefully that uh, explanation did shed a little light on some of the products we sell, specifically today, the synthetic rust and oxidation oils. For further information and newer videos coming out, check out petroleumservicecompany.com.